welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called This You May Ask? So I'll tell you. The accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And of course, I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Ingrid Fitzgerald. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching the show live at a later date, as it means a lot to us for you to um, connect with us. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I'm a guide who helps you remember your divine presence so that you can heal your past, create your future, and transform your present to expand your consciousness, understand your spiritual path, and take charge of your destiny so that you can feel your purpose. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy and through Divine Presence and everything else I offer, I guide you to remember why you are here, your spiritual path, and the clarity of the next steps to take to fulfill your purpose. Now, each episode of this show covers various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or an angel oracle card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Ingrid Fitzgerald, about coaching to connect and unfurl. Now, after 30 years working in deaf education, Ingrid finally chose to step away from the burnout and exhaustion. Though she loved working with the children and their families, she realised the system was broken and the culture in schools had become so damaging for staff. Ingrid wanted to create a new way to feel about work, life and herself, having survived a traumatic childhood, an emotionally abusive marriage and raising an amazing son. Ingrid found coaching in emotional freedom training therapy, discovering her own strengths, connecting to her heart, body and spirituality to gradually reopen. Now, this resulted in Green Heart Coaching and Ingrid supports women to connect with themselves and bravely grow, bloom and unfurl from inside out. So without further delay, hello, Ingrid, and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? I'm fine. Thank you, Ray. Thank you for inviting me. And I'm well. Excellent. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that not only can you share this video, but you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts, as both Ingrid and I want to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. So Ingrid, why don't you tell us more about your journey and about coaching to connect and unfurl? Okay, so my yeah, it is a journey, isn't it? It is a journey for all of us, I think. Um, so a little bit more. You 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 said some of it already in the in the introduction. Um, my story is I am I am fifty eight years old, and I now live in uh, East Kent. Um, I'm a mum. I'm a mum to my son Eddie, who you mentioned and my um, little dog Molly who has been on me has been with me for some of for quite a chunk of the sort of journey if you like that's I, I mentioned her because she's important um, I grew up I grew up in South East London um, and it was quite a challenging childhood so and I think our stories are important um, and our stories need to be heard um, and it, on the surface of it all, I suppose I came from a background that was um, quite middle class, but underneath that, there was quite a bit of dysfunction. Um, there was, I was brought up by my dad, which was very unusual in the um, sort of late 60s, early 70s, that that was unusual. Um, and I've, and there was divorce and there was some mental health issues. Um, I was a teacher for 33 years, and you mentioned some of that, um, some of my decision to make a big leap of faith and make some really big changes um, was to do with the fact that, that that system has really changed a lot in this country, and I'm sure in other countries too. Um, I worked with deaf children and their families and loved the connection with people and supporting people that supported those children in school and I did a variety of sort of classroom work and advisory work and then there came a point where I was as you mentioned burnt out I don't think I knew I was burnt out exactly I think that's a word that I found subsequently um, 
And, but I think there came a point, I, in fact, I remember, and I think sometimes women find this, that there comes a point and they can almost identify the moment that they started feeling, actually, I really can't do this anymore. We often say, the, the words perhaps, but I felt it in my body. It was quite a sort of, I, I remember where I was, you know, I was in the car park at seven o'clock in the morning and it was still dark. You know, a lot of teachers might resonate with that. Um, and I literally sat there and I knew in my body that this had to change. And I suppose, so sometimes we have to almost hit rock bottom before we can rise uh, and that's what happened to me and and um, and I suppose the bit that I've missed out was that I had a very difficult marriage experience too so so I was a, I've been a single mum for sort of 14 years um, and it was quite a traumatic breakup and and I went through sort of coercive control and and some abuse that um, has a huge impact mm. so I suppose my back and and then and then the choice to sort of step away from what just felt i think i felt unwell you know i was physically unwell i was emotionally unwell i was spiritually unwell so it was that that realization i suppose i may as i say i don't think we always realize exactly at that moment but i think um i now a few years on can see how how unwell, how I just wasn't balanced, how I wasn't peaceful, how I wasn't calm, and how I wasn't I wasn't in touch with me and myself and my truth, and that's become very very dear to me. Um, and I took the leap to um, to. I'd connected with an organisation that coached women and I had um, taken a leap because I wanted to train and be able to focus completely on that. So through a whole mixture of ways of making it possible, which wasn't easy, I took this leap to step away and I retired early and, um, and I trained for a year or so with an organisation called One of Many, which some people out there might have heard of. Um, and so that was my that was my that was my journey of of um, thinking about what I wanted for my life and, and what it was all about for me and where I wanted to go forward, my um, creating my second story, um, and and I'm not the same person that I was, and I I do experience life differently and and my journey it doesn't. End, does it my no, you know it, it's ongoing um and it's not and and that's also something I realized that that was okay you know my journey can still be unfolding and I can still find um life very challenging and I can have upsets and triggers just like everyone but but in a way that doesn't stop me being a great coach. It doesn't stop me supporting women, which is what I do, and holding space for them. Um, that was something important to to, to get hold of because um, because our because our work doesn't stop for ourselves. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a bit of background. Um, yeah. yeah. It it, well, well, thank you, thank you for sharing. You know, because there are sort of like um, women and some men out there that will have gone through this sort of like things. Um, you know, the experiences that you, that you've gone for, but they might not, or they might be going through, them, but they might not recognise them for you know uh, for for what they are. I, I mean, some of the, how did some of the things show up for you? Um, I energy wise. I I was I lacked energy. I think I lacked. How can I? I lacked a sort of. There wasn't joy. I felt that I felt the joy had had drained from me, and 
and then how you show up for other people is is affected I think you know I think I realized that I wasn't I wasn't the person I wanted to be for the people that I loved and cared about um I was very stressed I mean it combined with a very difficult time that we all went through in terms of Covid actually um but that but and for a lot of people I think over the last few years there's been a moment of kind of really weighing up what's important so I think it showed up in in how I um how I behaved and how I felt and 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 just feeling that life life was hard to the point of making me unwell yeah. um yeah yeah no so uh, yeah there, there's been yeah there's been lots and lots of changes and stuff that that have gone and I think a lot of people are kind of like now waking up and realizing that life isn't as it has been and that there are things that need to change now but they do feel a little bit lost confused and I'm not I'm not really me anymore sure and it's interesting because the title that I, I I said coaching to connect and unfurl and the more I thought about it it could have been coaching to reconnect and that's something that um very recently, you know, sometimes we're connecting back to who we were and we've lost ourselves, if you like. So, yes, we're connecting. We're, we might be connecting to our dreams and our wishes and our, our lives, but we might be connecting back to something perhaps that we, that we were before that we've lost, we've lost hold of. Um, we've, maybe we're reconnecting to what we really love and what we really enjoy and maybe it takes us back to um, that purity of childhood almost, that when, when we're young and when we're children, we kind of know what we love and we know what we enjoy and we know what we want to do. And it's as if life and culture and the paradigm that we live in, kind of sometimes we, lo we lose it. And, then, and so I think it's a reconnection sometimes too. I suppose what I feel I've done is I gave myself I stood I stepped back from what was going on in my world which was so busy and noisy um, the coaching training and the connecting with women in that in that group and that world I gave myself some space I gave myself some time to really focus on something that I was deeply interested in um, for myself and for and for the world in a way it was almost I part of my training made me very interested in living a different way with with a different energy with a different approach um, I, there's an expression on a it might be Julia Samuel the psychologist um talked about a fertile void, which I really like that expression because it was like there was a space, there was this empty space that I'd chosen because I didn't know exactly how it was all going to work out, but there was the possibility of growth and it felt like, ooh, you know, I, something new could come of this, something new. And indeed, that is what has happened for me. And now working with women, I holding that space for women who I suppose I tend to attract women who link to the sort of um, experience I've described really of sort of hitting that wall of hitting that moment of just feeling this is the time I have to do something um, and it might be it might not be quite as dramatic as I did uh, but you know work relationships um family you know how we show up and how we'd like it to be um taking that time making that space for themselves i suppose coaching is it's it's creating this special time um for yourself you know if you choose to be coached that's a that's a program um, that's a little that's a little journey within a journey isn't it yeah. and and you've sort of said I deserve this 
I deserve this time to explore the possibilities. Yeah, 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 yeah per per perfect. Yeah, and it is finding that that time and that space for us um, because when we sort of like nourish ourselves, then we can, you know, we can help and nourish other people and be of service to 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 them to them as well so how did eft fit into all of this well <laughs> so emotional freedom techniques eft or tapping as some people might know it and it's really it's really i think people are really getting to know about it much more in the last year or so um alongside the coaching i had perhaps perhaps a bit beforehand actually when i was still teaching I had, there was, you know, how, the, how do we, how, how were the connections made? Sometimes we can't remember, can we? But I, someone I used to work with um, reminded me of another person I used to work with and she taught EFT. And there was something in me that just thought, hmm, I'm interested in that. I'm interested in what that sounds like. And I liked that person, so I'm going to go. And I went along and found out. And it went from there, really. And I did various trainings um, in EFT. So, and and the, the beauty of the EFT is that it it can stand alone as a as as a practice and therapy that I offer women, or it can be incorporated in into coaching programs. Um, so, what is EFT? Um, the simple the simple explanation i suppose is that it's a it's a it's a practice that involves tapping on the meridian points on the upper body um, whilst focusing on an issue and that issue tends to be an emotion um, but it might be it might be a pain or it might be a limiting belief um, or it might even be a, um, a phobia. So an EFT um, uses the meridians of the body um, at the same time as speaking aloud what's going on. Okay. Um, and it's about tapping around which are the meridian points, the same as in acupuncture. Okay. So, it's, so some people say it's like acupuncture of the upper body without needles. <laughs> that always sounds good. Tapping. There's no needles and you can squeeze fingers, but there are some basic points and you can tap with two, two hands, one hand. It's very, very flexible. Um, and it sounds, it seems a bit strange, I suppose, but the, but the magic that I, the magic I have found in it is that it is both a talking, because you have, your, your talk, it's a talking therapy between, when you work one-to-one, -one, um, between practitioner and client, and there's this very physical element, which is the meridians, which is the tapping, which is about moving energy, and that's the link to the sort of, um, to acupuncture and to sort of Chinese medicine, if you like, that it's it's that flow. Energy is energy, and it's that let's let's get more balance, let's get more flow at the same time as talking about what's going on for the person and how they're feeling. And there's something very powerful in saying things out loud, both in coaching and in EFT, um, to identify how you feel and what it's about and what it's linked to. Um, so the process of, of tapping in AFT um, can reduce that emotional charge so that through the process, gradually that uh, the intensity of what's going on can, can reduce and it meet and people can feel much much less triggered, much less upset. Um, yeah, it's a sort of clearing the disruption, a bit like there's a there's a highway and it's all got jammed up 
and it's gridlock and it does and it feels deeply uncomfortable often you know um and it can be used for all sorts of things um but releasing that emotional charge um and there has been quite a lot of there has been research you know there's a, there's a there's a dr peter stapleton an australian um doctor has done quite a lot of research out there so eft is becoming um becoming more acknowledged in terms of how it's being used and that there is science to back it up so the the nervous system can be eased um you know the brain the amygdala can feel feel better and the thought processes that go on through between client and practitioner um you're tapping into the subconscious mind you're tapping into the right side of the brain at the same that that's all part of it and uh new connections and pathways can be fired up so you can people often can feel quite different and that could happen in one session or it could happen over maybe two or three sessions um uh, we're all very, very different um we would say it's simple we'd say it can be extremely effective and and it's safe you know practitioner keeps you safe um emotions emotions are you know some people just it's it's almost like we don't like to go there yes. um, but in fact it's uncomfortable it feels a bit messy especially if you're kind of saying it out loud but in fact i'm sure people might have heard the expression sort of you feel it to heal it um that by the very courageous act of sort of saying this is what's going on sometimes we don't know what's going on but as the process can often things emerge the subconscious sort of releases stuff um yeah i think i i i i find the magic of it is the combination of the language and the physical the sort of somatic um involved yeah yeah beautiful yeah beautiful way of um, describing her um uh e eft and i've always sort of like you know do you use your left hand do you use your right hand you know <laughs> but i suppose it doesn't really matter as long as you're just doing the tapping it really doesn't matter i mean that's because some people will start at the top of the head and some people start here and you'll see variations and you you know if you're right-handed if you're left it doesn't matter um yeah yeah it's, it's just, it's just it, doing the tapping and doing the speaking at the same time yeah yeah and and you could silently tap because there's a lot of there's a lot of um that can be therapeutic in itself um and as a as a self help tool we can tap on ourselves to try and calm and ease and reduce stress so so it's a kind of um many faceted and i and and what's what's emerged for me is this opportunity that within the coaching um relationship if people have 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 gained some awareness about how they're feeling on issues um or on limiting beliefs because as women those core unhelpful um limited beliefs often pop up um and if we need to release EFT is a great tool to be able to say within a coaching program would you like to spend some time you know shall we do some EFT um yeah it's something that i can use a lot alongside other other tools and strategies that i've i've got within yeah my coaching yeah yeah um so so is there sort of like um you know if uh for our viewers watching and they said that god i feel really stressed today and i want to but i can't turn off and go to sleep is there a, a tap in the a particular point that you could go on to yeah i mean i suppose if you were just choosing one thing for for people watching today i really like the um the collarbone point here you can tap on the collarbone that's really nice for reducing 
um, stress, anxiety and calming. Um, and there's a nice way, someone showed me the other day, to almost do a butterfly and to do it. Ah. So either or, but I've, I've enjoyed that. So you can almost imagine yourself, I don't know, if you were in bed and you couldn't get to sleep, you could be lying down. And, you, and, and it's that, it's very grounding, it's very calming. So, yeah, I like that butterfly tap. I, I like that butterfly yeah. tap, yeah. But, I, might, um, I might try that Tell me get to sleep. Yeah. I mean, I, the other, the, when, we, when we work with people, um, and they don't have to believe is the other wonderful thing about EFT. Don't have to believe. You, actually, that doesn't make any difference because... Um, it, it, it can be really effective anyway. So it's almost something to sort of give it a try. Um, when we set up, we, we, we do a lot of grounding before we start because obviously we're trying to tap into the, the, the subconscious and we're trying to get out of our logical and out of the here and now. And that always takes us into a kind of creative place of possibility, I think. But we tap in. And one of the wonderful things I've really... Um, realized fully is that we accept ourselves so part of the setup is sort of this is how I'm feeling today and I accept myself completely just as I am right here right now so you know whatever it is I'm feeling really worried about something and I love myself completely and I'm doing the best that I can. It's that it's that that acceptance which in EFT is so important, and in coaching is so important. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. So you know what what's been your healing and your inspiration? Sorry, did you say healing? Yeah, so, so what's been your healing in, inspiration? You know, has it been nature? Has it been other people? Uh, Okay, well, one of the things for me in particular, um, I so when I when I went for my sort of fertile, my fertile void, my time, um, one of the things I'd done before qualifying as a coach is I'd started walking dogs, just part time alongside teaching because I wanted, I realized I wanted to move. That was, I think the first thing was I just need to move. But then I realized it was also about being outside. And again, I don't think I had the words for it at the time, but there was an instinct that sort of said, come on, that, that, might, that might help you. you know, that might help your mental health. That might help you relax. That might help you breathe, if you like. And I and I still walk dogs. Um, and what came of that was also, I live in a beautiful part of East Kent next to the beach and, you know, and I'm very um, lucky to be in that position that I was drawn to the sea a long time ago, you know. I, and so nature is my, my I realised how important my connection to nature was. So the green heart, you know, the greenness that is in that, that, that title, if you like, is about nature, is about reconnecting with, with outside and with Mother Earth. And that actually, I get quite inspired by being outside. I take a lot of photos of outside as I, as I walk um, with the dogs. And sometimes it, it takes me somewhere that, that might be... Um, might be something I've seen, might be some. I remember the day, for example, in terms of flow, and I was just watching grasses moving, and so I had to film them because I just thought, when we find that flow, it's so much easier to move. Um, along with that acceptance, ironically, you know, it's like, the minute we accept ourselves just as we are, I think, I think that was something that... Um, that's a Carl Rogers psychologist term that, you know, the, the paradox is when we accept ourselves fully, just as we are, then we can change. You know, we think we're stuck and, and we often feel stuck, but to get that flow. So I get really inspired by nature, by the outside, by plants, by growth. And I think, and I think also I'm, 
I feel very connected to Mother Earth. So my sort of spirit, if you like, um, would be Mother Earth, would be kind of universal energy. So that's my source. You know, it doesn't really matter what we call it, I think, but that's that's what it is for me. And that, and so those images of um of plants and uh so I've got ferns behind me because the well, some of them are ferns, but that 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 unfurling that that ferns do, just that image of feeling tight and um curled up, which I think is how sometimes women feel, certainly how I felt, you know, stuck. Yeah. There's a barrier. In order, in order to shift that, that the, the fern I find very that just that image, I love, because that's what I'm seeking to um, to facilitate women to do. It's it's them that do it. That's 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 the important bit of coaching. Um, I I really believe in the women that I work with because I know that they have that wisdom. I know that it exists in them and I know it's about sort of igniting that, of reconnecting that. So that's the facilitation. They're the experts in making the changes. Um, yeah, so nature is my thing. Um, and, and, I, and, I, and I walk and I connect and I see the cycles and the patterns that are very... Um, repetitive in nature and I see the patterns and the cycles that are very repetitive in the women I work with so uh, the more I the more I think about it and um, there's a I there's a woman called Florence Williams that again it might be a familiar name but she wrote a book called Nature Fix um, where she's really saying that nature is part of who we are, you know, and I, I now kind of feel comfortable to say that. I think there was a time when I wouldn't have felt so comfortable, but it's what we do need it. Um, and she would say it's kind of a right of ours, you know, that we deserve to have access to. I feel very privileged to be where I am, but she would also talk about the fact that nature, you can have small fixes of nature um, and the impact of outside. Um, yeah, that we and we feel different in different environments, don't we? Yeah. Um, so I think the analogy in terms of the coaching is that that we can we can create our environment that we have as 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 women we have that incredible strength of being able to say okay I'm going to design my life the way that is linked to my dreams and my vision you know that's that's a very sort of spiritual part of it um and there's a mind part of it and there's a body part of it but it's all you know um and how supported our bodies feel sometimes when we're in nature is just such a yummy feeling um, and so grounding uh, and, it, and, and that we're deeply evolved to need it. So that's my nature fix connection. Ah. Bit. And, and um, on my Instagram, there's lots of sort of photos of that. It's sort of reflected there too. And, and probably reflected in the words. So I, yeah, I hope that I hope that makes sense. Yeah, to yeah, the no. people listening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so it's really nature that um, gave you the the name of Green Heart. Then the name of Green Heart was the greenness was definitely nature. I suppose it also came down to values because one of the things within my coaching that really struck me early on. Um, was a process of really looking at, at values, you know, and, and was my life lined up with my values and what were my values? And I suppose the green heart, I, I did a process, which I, can, which I often do with the women I coach, if that's what they want. Um, and mine came as love, connection, health, creativity, 
and I'm going to forget one, aren't I? Because I'm talking to you. Um, but it will come. But it was it, um, growth. It was growth. There we go. Growth. Right, yeah, of course it was. Um, and the green heart, I feel, encompasses my values. So that's where it is as well. But, but the more and more I've, I came up with that name quite a long time ago. What's beautiful is that the more I've continued in this work, I've realised that so many more connections apply to that name and it now feels really right. It's quite hard choosing a name sometimes, isn't it, for ourselves? Yeah. Um, it's very personal and it's very, yeah. So, yeah, that's the green heart. Um, yeah, yeah. Excellent. So, um, you know, and I really care about the earth and I really, you know, I, I suppose I am somebody who feels feels that we are at this very important time in the world, both for how we how we treat each other and the energy that's out there and how we live our lives, but also how we're treating Mother Earth. Um, so that's that's all very dear to me too. Yeah, beautiful. So as you know, I do um, angel oracle cards and I do guide meditations. And each week I like to ask my guests what they would like me to do for themselves and those watching. So Ingrid, would you like me to do an angel oracle card or a mini guided meditation? Um, I think I'll have a card, please. Oh, funny enough, I've got the cards right in my hand as we speak. <laughs> Amazing, that. So it's always when I do the cards. I do the cards for what you need to know for your highest good at this moment in time. For Although I work with the past, with past life stuff, when we go into the past, it's to heal and learn and understand our past so it doesn't affect us in the present. And when I take people into the future, it's so they can see, understand and know their future so they can come back to the present um, without having those worries. So um, what does Ingrid and everyone who's watching this live or the replay need to know for their high school at this moment in time? What does Ingrid and everyone who's watching this live today? Okay, we'll go with that card then that decides to jump out. So we have got wandering path. Enjoy the journey. There we go. We've talked about journeys, haven't we? We yeah. have. How, <laughs> how am, you know, this is this is what I love. The cards always sort of like come out with what we've been talking about. And, you know, and it's confirmation for you, Ingrid, you know, that you're on the, you know, you're on the white, the white, the right path. Um, and that, and it is about enjoying, you know, enjoying the the journey, you know, that wandering path of never knowing what is going to be happening the next day, but knowing you're on that path and watching out for those synchronicities, um, you know, that came into your life that connected you with all the right people, um, you know, and that, are, that, are, that have come mm. in. And to those watching, it is saying, you know, yes, you might have a map, a route of where you want to go, but don't stay fixated on that. You know, enjoy the journey um, on that map. And if it takes you off meandering somewhere else, then go with that flow, you know, because yeah. that will bring you the synchronicities, the people, the inspiration that you need to bring you back to that map to get to your final destination. So, yeah, yeah brilliant card to come yeah. out. It's not it's not linear, is it? Sometimes it's a bit of a wander and it can be a cycle and we come round again. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, Ingrid, do you have any insights or thoughts of la or last words of wisdom to leave our viewers? Okay, um, what would I say? I, I suppose I would say that another word I probably haven't mentioned so much today was is bravery and courage. And I would just say I'm leaving women with the fact that I think I have met some, some really brave, courageous women who have really decided that they want to make a transformation that really lasts for them. And I think we're often much more powerful than we think we are, and we can really tap into our strengths. Um, and that's what I love doing. 
is kind of finding finding people's stories and making those reconnects, joining the dots, if you like, joining the dots backwards, I think is really interesting and not that it doesn't have to be linear and it doesn't have to be, we can do it a different way. We can do it with a sort of soft power that is about women. Um, that sort of feminine, some people would call it yin energy. It's not, it doesn't, it, it's not even gender necessarily, but that it's about collaboration and cooperation and dreaming and knowing that that can be a real strength that we can we can do things a slightly different way and be really effective Beautiful. and and get where we want to go yeah yeah absolutely amazing wonderful words of wisdom there so i hope everyone that you've enjoyed this conversation and found it insightful because i know i definitely have so ingrid if people want to connect with you how do they do that um my my website is um greenheartcoaching.com um, and on Instagram I'm greenheartcoaching um, and that they can always send me messages in, via either of those yeah I'd love to, I'd love to hear from anybody who's who's interested just to have a chat find yeah. out more yeah Thank and you. I and that's fine and I will put the links in the comments after the show so people can actually just go click on them and go directly um, direct directly to them so thank you so much Ingrid for um, sharing your story and uh, um, you know your words of wisdom um, and your and your guidance and of course to everyone who's watching you know if you are now ready to remember your divine presence and step onto your spiritual multi-dimensional path but you feel lost confused stuck or alone then please feel free to reach out and connect with me and we can see where you are now and how you can move forward to take charge of your destiny so that you can spread your wings and soar. And of course, please feel free to join my weekly newsletter and receive a free future life progression recording to discover your destiny by seeing into your future, to get guidance and clarity that you can use in your current life, as well as a couple of other free gifts. And again, thank you everyone so much for watching. And I'd like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny, just like you. And of course, if you are watching this on YouTube, as always, if it so resonates, please feel free to subscribe, comment and like, and hit that bell button to be notified of when this show goes live or I post new guide meditations. For every subscription, like, comment really helps with the algorithms of YouTube which gets my show to be seen more so that myself and my guests can actually reach more people out there. And I look forward to you all joining me same time, same place next week. Take care, everyone. Bye.